Welcome everyone and thank you for joining today's webinar presented by IntelliZ and LearnAmp. My name is Danielle Seropian and I am the Marketing Associate here at IntelliZ. IntelliZ, a Microsoft partner, is the leading provider of change management and learning and development with a heavy focus on e-learning content and live software training. We train from everyday office applications such as Teams all the way up to Microsoft technical training. Our partner LearnAmp is recognized by influencers all around the world like Craig Weiss as a leading top 10 LXP. Today we are presenting getting the most out of Teams. Now we will turn the time over to our trainer, Maddie. Hi, my name is Maddie Ross and I'm going to be guiding you through today's webinar. We're going to be covering a few different topics today regarding Microsoft Teams. We're going to go over setting up boundaries, creating true collaboration, turning remote into connected, and then we'll talk about what's new and next in Microsoft Teams. So you now have Microsoft Teams. How do we set this up to work for ourselves or for our teams? The best way is to make sure there are good boundaries put into place. We can start with some basic meeting etiquette. First, you should find out what your company expects. See what they consider to be proper etiquette in Teams. Find out what people within your organization's boundaries are for Teams. For example, some people might prefer a team's message to an email or vice versa. There also might be some cultural changes between generations. For example, I'm in the younger generation. I fit somewhere between the millennials and Gen Z. And that being said, I prefer for someone to send me a quick chat to asking if I have time for a call before they call me, whereas someone my mom's age might not find it odd to be called out of the blue. And then lastly, Start thinking about what your own personal boundaries are going to be like in Teams. Are you going to prefer to be chatted before you get called? Do you prefer video calls or audio calls? Maybe you prefer emails. So start thinking about your own personal boundaries as well. I'm going to take you guys through Teams and show you a live demo of what the presence indicator looks like, how to set a status message, and different ways to manage notifications. I'm going to bring it up to my Teams here. So as you can see, I'm inside of my own Teams channel. And we're going to head over to the top right corner where we see our picture, and we're going to click on it. Now, underneath our name and our email, you can see that right now it says my status is presenting. This is what we like to call the present status. It kind of gives people in your organization a little idea what you might be up to uh, and what you might be working on and what your availability is for maybe a call or a chat, et cetera. If we click on this drop down menu, you can see that there are different ones available. We have available, busy, do not disturb, be right back, to appear away, and even appear offline. Now, what Teams does is it pulls directly from your Outlook calendar. So if you have meetings put in there, or if you've blocked time off to work on projects, it actually will pull that and base your status off of that. You also can manually set it though if you would like to. So I can click on any of these, but as you can see, I'm currently set to presenting. But I could click on available and give it a second. And you should see that little green check mark appear saying that I am available. Another great feature with the present status is we can play around with duration. So I also could, you know, set my status to busy and I could set it for any certain amount of time, for 30 minutes, an hour, today, this week. And you can even customize it further. So if you're like, you know, I want it to be set until 5 p.m. today, you can do that however you want. So, you know, busy for an hour and I hit done. And then another great thing about your present status is you also, if you click this reset status button, it'll just reset your status to whatever it's going to pull from your Outlook calendar or wherever you might be uh, in Teams. So if you're in a call, for example, and you reset, it will just say, put you back that you're in a call. So as you can see, I've been thrown back into presenting. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is we're going to talk about setting a status message. So same thing, we click on our picture, we go to our status message. Now, I kind of like to think of this status message uh, as similar to and out of office in Outlook. It's kind of like a little message that you can have appear when someone's trying to message you. This could be a great feature if you have an appointment or maybe you're working from home that day, or even maybe if you are out of office, you can even throw up a little message. So I'm gonna write that I am on a call until 3 p.m. will be unavailable. Until then, and what's really cool about this feature is that you actually can 
tag people inside of your status message. So, um, so if so, I'm on a call until three. Please, I will be unavailable until then. So you could say please contact, and then using your at symbol, I can tag Ellen Wilson. She should appear right there. Um, in my status message. What's also cool is you also can uh, check off this box and it kind of appears the same way that when you email someone who has an out of office app, like a little bubble will appear above the, the chat box if they're trying to message you, uh, just giving them like a heads up so it'll show right at the top. And then you can have, uh, again, you can set up when you want your status message to clear. So if this was, you know, for a couple hours or for today or for the week, whatever it might be, you can even further customize it. So if I wanted this, you know, I said I'm in a call until three, I can set it until 3 p.m. and click done. And then you actually can see your status message will appear as soon as you click it. And it's even says like displayed until 3 p.m. I can edit, delete it, and do what I want there. So that is a, that is a pretty neat little feature right there. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is some different notification settings that we actually have available. So there are two ways that you can get to it. Uh, one way is to click on your settings and go to notifications. I'm gonna show you the other way. That's another little shortcut. If we actually head over to the top left corner where we see activity, if you click on that, we're gonna see a little gear. If you click on that, it's actually gonna open us right to our notification settings. So these are great because you can totally customize them for how you want them to look. You know, Do you want a banner? Do you just want a notification? Do you not want any notification at all? So you can really customize them to get them to work for you. So right now mine is set up that if I have any missed activity emails, I'll get them once every hour, but I also you know, can get them as soon as possible, every 10 minutes, daily, or I can shut that feature off. This is where I can adjust you know, the message preview and if I'm getting a sound for incoming calls and notifications. And then further through here, uh, I can get different desktop notifications. So mine are currently set to custom. And if you click on that, you can see the ones that I have set up. So I have my personal mentions, team mentions, and I get everything with a banner and a feed but you also can totally adjust those to only in feed or have them off however you would like them to be. Uh, there's also some options for your pinned channels where you can show new posts um, and what, really whatever you would like. So feel free to play around with those different settings and find what really works best for you. We have some other notification options down here below. We have options for your chat, you know, for your mentions, replies, likes and reactions, how you wanna see them. Uh, your meetings, you know, when you want a meeting started, like, you know, you might want a banner, uh, you know, different settings there. And then this is a really neat feature under people. So if I click edit, this is a feature where you can essentially follow a person's status. So for example, uh, Ellen Wolf and I are working on a project together. She's a port uh, an important person that I tend to message a lot. And it's nice to know when she's available. So when she's in a meeting, uh, basically what it will do as soon as her status turns green and is like Ellen Wilson's available, I get a notification telling me Ellen Wilson is now available. So I can message her, call her. And again, we we're talking when we were talking about setting up boundaries earlier, this is a great way to set up boundaries. You know, you could be like, hey, only message or call me when I'm available. So whatever you really want to do to add people, you can just start typing in their name and then you can see that they'll get added right there and you can turn them off at any time. And then we have some other settings as well, just different recommendations and tips and things like that. And so those are some of our just basic settings for notifications and some present stuff that we have inside of Teams. And now we're gonna pop back over to our presentation. So let's talk a little bit about creating that true collaboration. So something that I love about Microsoft Teams is that it is it really is it's so much more than just meeting and chat. It really is such an amazing remote collaboration tool. Like you can you can work on documents simultaneously in it with other people. There's teams of channels to further help manage workflows. There's also amazing different um, apps that you can add to your tabs that really can help uh, make remote work especially a lot more engaging than you would think. So I'm gonna show you guys some of these different things in Teams here. Go to find my... So now we're back looking at our Teams and I'm gonna head over to my Teams tab here on the left side. And as you can see, I'm a member of quite a heavy amount of Teams. 
And so when we start with our teams, we have our basic, uh, so your team is just a group of people. They can be private or public, however your organization uh, decides to set them up. And then further inside your team, we have channels. And the channels can get a little more specific and the channels can be as specific as, you know, not everybody in the team needs to be in specific channels. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch for Aromar that are just different, different teams that we have for different projects we might be working on and things like that. So currently I'm inside of our human resources tab our team and every team automatically comes with a general channel. And inside the general channel, we have our post files, wiki, and any other apps that we might add. Something I do wanna mention is that every time you create a new team in Microsoft Teams, a auto automatically creates a SharePoint site for that team. You get a SharePoint drive. So currently I'm clicked into the files tab of my team. And this is actually a SharePoint site where I can open it in SharePoint if I really want to. And all of these files get uploaded and saved there, which is really cool. There's a lot of connectivity between SharePoint and Teams. So now you have this automatic SharePoint site that gets created and you can store your documents and be able to share things more easily with your team, which is really fantastic. There's also a lot of connectivity with OneDrive and things like that, which can really, again, make remote work so much more engaging. And it's so much, again, so much more than just meeting and chat. So as you can see, I have all my documents in here. I could click on these and edit these right in Teams. Like I don't even need to go to open the Microsoft Word application on, in my browser on my desktop. I literally can click in this and just start editing, which is really cool. There's also the function if I click on these three dots, I can even check out a document like I would in SharePoint, but I can do so right in Teams. So there really is a lot of that connectivity, which is really, really amazing. Um, something else I want to talk about is we can add different applications and tabs. So you can add tabs to your, to your different channels. So you can add OneNote, Power Apps, you have these like robots you can add. Literally you can add so many different tabs to really customize how you want them to look, which I think is really great and makes Teams, I think, really an awesome remote work tool. And to talk a little bit about how to manage workflows and assigning tasks, I'm actually gonna be talking about this a little bit later in the presentation, but there is now a new feature of adding channel calendars to your channels, which is really cool. It makes this specific calendar, but we'll go through, I'll show you guys how to do that and what they look like. And now tasks and, uh, tasks and planner are now one and they live inside of Teams, which is really cool to really kind of add more of that workflow and assigning tasks there. I want to pop back to the presentation. So next we're going to talk about turning remote into connected. So there's a really great feature inside of Teams meetings that they've now added called together mode. So together mode kind of takes your meeting and throws you guys into this lecture hall. It's really, really fun. They also have other options as well. You can be under the sea, in space, in a small office. It's like, it's really cool. But put these little cutouts. It's a little goofy, but it definitely is a lot of fun. And how to do that is you can just go to your settings tab and you wanna make sure that the new meeting experience is turned on. And then when you start your Microsoft Teams call, you need at least five people in order for this feature to work. And then click the three dots and select together mode and this will appear. Something important to note is that when you do switch into together mode, uh, it does tend to change it for everybody else in the meeting, especially if you decide to switch to the under the sea meeting or in space, it does change it for everybody else in the meeting, just so that you're aware. It's not just for your personal view, everybody can see it. That's an important thing to know, but it is a lot of fun and that really helps uh, make you feel like you're not just sitting on, on these, in these boxes, these tech boxes. Teams now also offers breakout rooms. And if any of you have used Zoom breakout rooms before, they're very, very similar um, in the way that they work. Uh, but you, know, you click on this little box to create your breakout rooms and you can have a max of 50, which is a lot of breakout rooms, but it's really, that's a fantastic thing. And you can have teams either automatically assign them for you or you can have it done manually, really whatever your preference is of how you'd like to have things set up. And this is kind of a little bit of a view of what it looks like when you're in a meeting and you're trying to assign breakout rooms. You basically just can check off who you want to put where, and then you can select assign, and then you can assign them to those specific rooms. And to open rooms, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can click start rooms to open all of the breakout rooms at once, but you also can open just specific rooms by clicking the three dots next to the room and clicking open the room, and it will just open the room uh, for 
just that one. So it's kind of cool. You can do those things there. Another cool thing about breakout rooms is you can send announcements to all of the rooms at a whole. So like if you're working on something and you gave people 20 minutes, you can be like, hey, you got five more minutes left for those. For those breakout rooms, you can send them to all the rooms and not have to like individually pop in, which is a, I think a really helpful feature. And this is really, really neat is that it actually creates individual teams chat for each of those breakout rooms. So even after, you know, the meeting is over, you can still go back and look at those breakout rooms and look at those chats and, you know, look at the conversation because Teams, you know, saves, saves all your chats forever. So you can go back and reference stuff and you can still, you know, say you're having a really great conversation and you're like, oh yeah, so-and-so was talking about this really cool thing. I want to ask them about that. You can go back into the room and be able to chat with those people again, which is, which is great. There's also, you can join the breakout rooms so you can interact with your break room, breakout room participants. Um, you can contribute to any of the room chats, make an announcement for everybody, and even join them. And to join them, all you have to do is select the more options button, the little three dots next to that room, and then you can join it, and then you can select uh, return to return back to the main meeting screen. We're now going to pop into the what's new and what's next with Microsoft Teams. Uh, something what's great about Microsoft Teams is that it's always updating. I feel like I open it every day and there is a new feature that wasn't there before. So Teams is always constantly updating and they're always releasing new features. Something they just released recently is they now have more reactions available in the meetings. So you can add a thumbs up, a heart, an applause, laughing, uh, which is really fun. and they can appear a, different, a couple different ways. So they're up at the top there. So when you're in a meeting, it'll usually just like appear above uh, your little picture there. And then when you're in like a bigger meeting and someone's presenting something, it appears like a Facebook Live thing where they'll just kind of appear onto the, the, the uh, PowerPoint or whatever you're looking at, which is really, really fun. And I talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but we are now going to go through uh, the calendars and channels and using planner and the planner integration with Teams. So I'm gonna pop over that way quickly. I'll share my screen with you there. So currently I am back in my human resources tab. We're actually gonna pop over to IT training so I can show you how to add this. So if I'm inside of my team here, in my channel, I'm gonna go up to this plus sign that we see up at the top, and this is add a tab. And I kind of show you if you can add different tabs, and as you can see, can channel calendar is an option. If you click into that, click add, and then it's gonna give me an option to name it, but for now we're just gonna call it channel calendar. And then here it is, and this is a specific channel calendar that's just for the channel. So you can set up meetings, you can have people put in their availabilities. It really can help. You know, this could be useful for PTO or if, you know, we're working on a project, you can put project deadlines for that specific channel all in this calendar. You even can create meetings inside of this specific channel that will go out to all the channel members. So this can be a really helpful feature, especially with trying to manage workflow and trying to keep everybody organized, having a channel calendar that everybody can see and everybody can look at is really Awesome. Now, another great feature inside of Teams, there's two ways we can look at it. So I'm gonna to go to my three dots and go find my planner. So this is a new great feature called Tasks by, so it's Tasks by Planner and To Do. So it basically combines the planner application from Microsoft and your tasks from your Outlook. So I have, you know, my own personal tasks that are from my Outlook right here. Uh, that I can add. And what's cool is, is when I add a task here, it actually will update in my Outlook task so I can get my Outlook notifications the same way that you would if you created a task inside of Outlook. And then I also have all of my shared plans through Planner. So it kind of combines like all of your tasks and to-do lists in one place. So you can have your shared plans, your Outlook tasks that you want. They all live in this one little tab, which is really great. And you can totally really help manage your workflow. So it's kind of, they've combined them together, which is really cool. Another really neat feature about Planner, specifically in Teams, is you actually can add a Planner tab as well. So you can create almost, so we'll call this task for now, you basically can create your own shared plan inside of your channel. So this is for this specific IT channel. Now we have our own Planner that we can assign tasks to people, we can 
set due dates, we can put create all new buckets of however we want our workflow to be, which is really helpful. Again, this is such a great collaboration and remote work tool that we really should take advantage of more. Now, as I said, there is always new things coming into Teams. Teams is constantly updating and changing and adding new features all the time. So these are some fun features that are coming soon. Meeting delegation is going to be available in Teams soon. So I don't know if any of you have ever used Outlook delegation where you can set delegators to manage your calendar and things. You can now eventually will be able to do that in Teams. They're gonna be adding URL shorteners, being able to add multi-Teams accounts at the same time. What you can do right now, you can actually add a personal account, but I believe that they are also working on being able to add multiple work accounts as well. You also now can view and export a list of users who attended your meeting after the meeting. It will appear in your meeting details. They've also now added a transcription feature, which is really cool. So if you record a meeting, you actually can also get a trans physical transcription as well, which can be really helpful, especially if you have a big meeting and you want to make sure your meeting notes reflect what was said in the meeting. That's a great tool to use. And now the option to rename some uh, team channels. These are all things, again, that are coming soon and will eventually be available. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys a little feature, two little things that can help you kind of keep updated with some of the things going on in Teams. So when we are in our Teams channel here, if we go down to the bottom left corner where we see the help. So if we click what's new, this is the t this will actually tell you all the new updates in Teams. So you can see these are the, a new update of, as of March 19th, and it's all by date. And you can kind of search through there and they break it down further by what platform it's on, whether it's the desktop and web for Microsoft, iOS, Android, and any team's devices. So this is really cool. And you can always, you know, take a peek and see the new things they've released. Another great little feature is if you go back to help and go to suggest a feature, this will open up in a web browser. And it kind of just shows you all the new features that they're working on. You can vote on a feature. You can look at all the new features that people are suggesting, stuff that they might be working on, things that are coming soon. So if you're kind of a tech person like myself, that's I love going in there and kind of seeing what they're working on. And you totally can go in and take peeks. You can vote on things. You're like, yes, I want to see this in Teams. So they have all these really cool things. It's, it's even a collaborative uh, creation, I would say. It's such a, an amazing, amazing platform to use. So that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the Teams presentation and you learned a little bit of something about Teams today. Thank you guys. Great, thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here. Make sure to look out for a follow-up email from IntelliZ with today's slide deck and a special promotion for more IntelliZ content on LearnAmps platform. Thanks again for joining us today and we will see you next time.